Okay, so our, for our leukemia treatments, as well as our leukemia interventions, there are some basic things that you have to know uh, to pass your nursing test, and really what your nursing test wants you to figure out, or wants you to know as a nurse uh, when taking care of patients here. So what we do for leukemia treatment here is obviously we have our bone marrow producing way too many blood cells, these white blood cells. So our bone that's naturally thin, well, I'm going to over-exaggerate it here, but really just has all these white blood cells kind of pushing on our bone marrow, okay? So this bone marrow is really, really hurts. Our bones hurt. Our WBC count is increased and really crowding out all the other cells here. So these WBCs are crowding out our H and H, our red blood cells, that hemoglobin, those oxygen carriers of the red blood cell, and the platelets themselves. So, let's say that your patient, um, your hospital, has a maximum of 10,000 WBCs, okay, on your laboratory report value. Now, I've seen patients like at a 30 WBC count, the main clinical manifestation of leukemia is that everything else will be low. So your platelets will be low, your hemoglobin, as well as your red blood cells will be low. Okay? So what we got to understand is that whenever you have that high elevated WBC, that white blood cell count, and it's going to crowd out all the other ones. So what do we do? We give radiation and chemotherapy first. Radiation and chemotherapy is pretty much going to restart our system here. We're going to wipe out all of our white blood cells. We're going to wipe out all of our policemen. So we're killing off, really, all of our white blood cells, which almost like we're taking all of our policemen off of the highways of our body. All, the, all of our policemen are off the highways. So, if you do have what's called an opportunistic infection, or if someone sneezes on you if you're taking chemotherapy, or if you're doing radiation, now you have no Police, no cops, okay? There's no policemen, and patients on chemotherapy, patients on radiation, we are killing off all the immature white blood cells. All those blood cells are dead, pretty much. So instead of having between a five to 10, WBC count is what most hospitals range. You'll have anything less than either a 2 or a 1. When you become neutropenic, you'll have something less than 0.9 white blood cells, or even I've seen patient down to a 0.5 white blood cell count. Now that's like really, really low. Um, I mean, our main goal is to kill off all of these immature white blood cells, these, these little baby white blood cells, these, these immature police that, um, that are being reproduced, okay? So we're killing those off, restarting our system, and we can even do a bone marrow transplant to give our bones just a reinfusion of good working stem cells, these blood stem cells that are going to produce adequate policemen, that are going to produce adequate security for your body, 
not overproduce all these rookies and crowd out all the other functioning um, blood cells in the body. So we kill off all of your WBCs, all these immature white blood cells. What do you think is going to happen if you take all the policemen off of the roads, on the highways? Oh my gosh. You're going to have people speeding. You're going to have people, um, you know, littering. You're going to have people, you know, um, let's just say in the city. Take all the policemen out of the city. You're going to have people rioting, taking whatever they want, just causing massive amounts of... Um, disruption pretty much chaos so with your patients who are on this neutropenic precaution basically drastically low white blood cells all this really means is that your patient has any chance to become infected they will become infected so that's why we limit the amount of um, possibilities that your patient can get an infection. So we're going to just do prophylactic antibiotics, okay? We're going to make sure that everyone washes their hands when they go into the room. We might even do reverse isolation so that if a family member um, is coughing, we're going to make sure that everyone wears a mask because Healthy individuals like, you know, you and I, we can have something that's infectious, but it's not going to affect us because our policemen, our white blood cells, are defending us. Now, if we cough on someone, and we're not necessarily sick, we cough on someone who has immunosuppression or neutropenic precautions, they're probably going to get sick because there's no policemen on the highways. So we're going to do prophylactic antibiotics, okay? We're also going to do good hand washing. Check. We're also going to limit the amount of possibilities the patient has in terms of getting an infection. So we're going to limit the amount of family members that come to see the patient, okay? We're going to uh, limit any type of, now this is a test question here, any type of fresh fruit or flowers. And they love to put that on test questions. Flowers or fruit. Now what's wrong with fruit and flowers? Well, the biggest thing that's wrong with our fresh fruit, and that's fruit right there, if you didn't know, and our fresh flowers, is that uh, a lot of the sanitation process to clean these things are not really um, sanitized that well. Fresh fruit and flowers have really the most um, propensity of getting your neutropenic patient sick, especially if they have a low, low white blood cell count. So, with your chemotherapy, we're killing off all those white blood cells. We're killing off all those cells also that really rapidly reproduce. So, you're going to have alopecia, hair falling out. You're going to have the epithelial cells in your mouth not being reproduced. So, you might have some sores as well as ports of entry. You're also going to have possibly... Um, your in the integrity of the lining of your GI be compromised. So don't do rectal thermometer tests on your patient because this is an actively rapid um, epithelial that are going to be killed off. So some things to watch for guys.